is the Chris Abraham Show. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. America is a nationalist, populist country. It's not necessarily a rightist, nationalist, uh, populist country, and it's not a leftist, populist, nationalist country. It is a populist, nationalist country. National populism is America's jam, and hearing Pence talk about how conservatism is different from populism and thinking that anybody in America cares about conservative values or cares about <clears throat> establishment values or cares about small government or cares about um, um, war abroad, uh, internationalism, cares about NATO, cares about Ukraine or Russia, cares much about China at all is, is, is neither here nor there. Americans care about America. Americans uh, believe in a border crisis. America, Americans on the left and the right are anti-COVID lockdown. And Americans on the far left and far right, both of which are populists, like things like entitlements, like things like social services, like things like unions, like things like <clears throat> um, good jobs and good pay and a home and a car and a life lived as one wants to. People on the extreme left and people on the extreme right that share nationalism, and even if they only share populist values, are getting on each other's train. And while people like Pence are looking at uh, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy and completely crossing their eyes, they're not on, you know, they're not on the podcast, they're not on the YouTube, and they're not seeing things like, you know, it's a big deal when, you know, Russell Brand and Jimmy Dore, who are leftists, or even, you know, on breaking points, even when Cigar and Crystal, who are both populists, but Cigar is a conservative populist, and Crystal Ball is a leftist populist, they agree on most things. So I know that all of my intellectual friends like to debunk the concept of the horseshoe, where the establishment is up at the top of the horseshoe, the rounded front part of the horseshoe. The left and the right, the liberals and the conservatives are up there. And out on the fringe, out on either side of the horseshoe horns, I guess, uh, you have the fringes and the fringes on the extreme left are populists, and the extremists on the far right are populists. Everybody was right when they called Trump a a uh, a big city uh, liberal, a big city Democrat. You know, in many ways, uh, the guy is 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 not anti-Semitic. The guy is not uh, anti-gay, uh, but the guy is definitely a populist. The guy is definitely uh, a nationalist, and I feel like they're you know when um. Chelsea, uh, when, oh, what's her name? Uh, when my favorite Hawaiian girl, uh, who was in the white pantsuit, um, God, I love her so much. What's her name? Anyway, even she uh, went from trying to, she's a, you know, a leftist populist for sure, and even a nationalist because she was a soldier. And uh, the only place for her, the only place for a leftist populist in America especially a nationalist, leftist, populist in America. The only place for one of those is not on MSNBC, is not on CNN, is not on CBS, ABC, or NBC. The only place is on podcasts, is on YouTube, and on Fox News. In fact, if you're going to run as a nationalist and as a populist in America, the only place to run is not as a Democrat, but the only place ticket you can run on is either third party or as a Republican, right? Because if you, 
I dare say that leftists and rightists populists don't care anything. They don't care about, they're not anti-abortion. The, um, uh, the, uh, the re- revocation of uh, Roe was the long-term goal of a, uh, of a Catholic organization, of, uh, of Christians and Catholics who have spent the last 50 years. I remember, I remember working for them at New Media Strategies back in the mid-2000s. They were, there's a single focus on an anti-abortion, uh, and this had nothing to do with populists. Populists are more likely to be libertarian or even libertine. Populists, you know, like things like 4chan. Populists like things like Reddit. Populists uh, like video games. They like first-person shooters. They like uh, plant-based medicine. They like marijuana. They... They might be very physically fit. I don't mean to have all these generalizations, but uh, they are as likely to be pro-Jesus as they are as likely to be agnostic, as they are likely to be atheistic, as they are likely to be extreme left uh, flower children or um, people who believe in ascended masters or goddess culture or vibrational states or or believe in transcendence and um and goddess and love astrology and follow numerology right there's more chance of someone being a a cult member of the occult as a populist than the member of an occult being part of like a liberal democrat or a neo-lib or a neocon i mean it it blows my mind how many war pigs there are in the center left and center right and how many people um even my friend gina mendolia we broke up as friends over a dinner i literally we started screaming at each other i literally got up and left and we haven't spoken since and it was simple my argument was that army soldiers are not in afghanistan in order to save Muslim women from Islam. I said, you must be out of your mind if you think that any of our goals abroad, outside of words, has anything to do with actually saving women and girls, ever saving or giving rights or maintaining rights or supporting democracy or the rule of law. I mean, there's zero proof that any of this has happened. Even the... Uh, the, uh, the utopia du jour until two years ago, until four years ago, was one of the two most corrupt, uh, countries on the entire planet, Niger and Ukraine, right? Now they are the buttress, they are the cornerstone, they are the sweet love child of American democracy and, 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 uh, anti, uh, Soviet flair. Uh, it's a grudge match it's a post-soviet grudge match it's a it's a uh reactivation of generational trauma uh people are being used uh people are useful idiots and then you know pence goes ahead and says well guys we're republicans aren't you conservative the only reason really that there are any republicans in office is because of the attraction of populism and of nationalism People are voting the Republican ticket for Trump-based politics. They're only voting Republican at all. Like, GOP is dead. The only reason that, the, that anybody votes GOP these days is because of this extreme populist bent. And populism isn't just exclusive to the right. Uh, I would say that most Antifa members are populists. They might not be nationalists. They might be internationalists. But they're certainly not liberal Democrats. If anything, they're communist populists, socialist populists, Marxist populists. They have the same kind of, you know, I would say that black nationalism is black populism. I would say that um, definitely the Black Panthers were populists. I don't know why you don't see the nose on your face. You America, we America... We're a nationalist populist country who are tacitly being held onto by a very fatigued rider 
who can't really control where his horse is going anymore, who believes that it has a certain amount of control over its horse, but instead of figuring out what its horse is, which is national populist horse, um, we're very close to, like, taking out your revolver and shooting the horse in the head because you don't want to ride it anymore, and you don't want it, you know that it's not going to be anything but what it is. So, on that note, I am hopefully coming to the end of what might be RSV or grip or flu or cold or COVID or something, but I got to tell you, I'm not very happy about it. I thought that if I had a little bit of whiskey and tea and stuff last night, I'd feel better, but in fact, I haven't had anything to drink for so long that it just made me feel terrible, and I'm really grateful today that I don't have AFib. Like, by every by every uh, meter stick, I should be deep in AFib now, considering how many mistakes I made yesterday in the in the uh, sad attempt to kind of expectorate my lungs and expectorate my sinuses and clear my head and feel better. So on that note, guys, this is Season 5, Episode 63, and this is the Chris Abraham Show. My name's Chris Abraham, and I will talk to you soon. Mahalo. What do you think, huh? Bye-bye. Wait, 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 wait. Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard is the woman I was thinking of. Tulsi Gabbard is a leftist progressive populist who's also a nationalist and the only reason she ever has to run i mean she tried to run as a democrat right but now she was iced out and now the only platform she has is uh gun casts podcasts places like glenn greenwald uh fox news tucker carlson etc because she's been rejected she's neither a GOP or a DNC ready person. She's that weird thing. And don't forget, when the leftist populace and the rightist populace realize that the enemy of their enemy is their friend, this is going to be a very, very interesting country politically. All right, Tulsi Gabbard, love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.